We live in a microwave society. We tend to forget things easily due to the amount of information we intake on a daily basis. We've developed the need of wanting instant results, instant gratification. We want the summer body, but we do not consider the work and discipline it takes. We want the perfect relationships, but disregard the compromise of time it takes to build with someone. We post pics and statuses on social sites for approval or to validate thoughts we have in our own minds. Each month, there's a new topic, a new trend, a new event to discuss, forgetting the last topic once the new one is revealed, thus giving us what I like to call Kelly Bundy syndrome. What's the Bill of Rights? The first ten amendments to the Constitution. What are the three main types of clouds? There are three. Cumulus, cirrus, and stratus. What is a synapse? The junction, a microscopic gap, actually, of two neighboring neurons or nerve cells. If any of you brothers and sisters grew up in the 90s and watched Married with Children, then you might remember this episode where Kelly Bundy was on a game show and she had this one problem. There is one slight problem. See, if, if you take a gallon of knowledge and pour it into a shot glass of a brain, you're gonna spill some. In other words, certain basic information had to be sacrificed. Like what? What was that? <laughs> the more technology advances, the worse our attention spans become. With the masses suffering from an undiagnosed case of short-term memory loss, it's easy for important information to be forgotten and slip through the cracks. In the last decade alone, each year we've been faced with perpetual boogeymen or social issues that consume the minds of the masses through the news, media outlets, and social sites. All the while, underlining agendas were put into play under the nose of the people that were distracted. Similar to how a doctor distracts a baby before he administers a shot. Keeping the baby's mind focused on his theatrics and songs only to carry out his true agenda at the right time. Are you kidding me? <laughs> and just like the doctor in that last clip, they want you to focus on the bubbles in your face. On March 11, 2020, the world was subject to one of the biggest changes to the common lifestyle in recent memory, as the pandemic changed the way we lived. With the focus of such being public safety, social distancing, and quarantining, for the first time in modern history, the world moved in unison to prepare and adjust for what was believed to be the end of life as we know it. For the sake of this video not getting flagged, I won't go deep into the Besides, it's not the major focus. Play the part, but it's not the major point. Keeping the 2020 timeline in mind, I would like to show a clip of Dr. Yuval Noah Harari at the World Economic Forum meetings. Just listen to what's being said and remember what was going on at the time. We humans should get used to the idea that we are no longer mysterious souls. We are now hackable animals. Data might enable human elites to do something even more radical than just build digital dictatorships. By hacking organisms, elites may gain the power to re-engineer the future of life itself. Because once you can hack something, you can usually also engineer it. And if indeed, we succeed in hacking and engineering life, this will be not just the greatest revolution in the history of humanity. This will be the greatest revolution in biology since the very beginning of life four billion years ago. For four billion years, nothing fundamental changed in the basic rules of the game of life. All of life, for four billion years, 
dinosaurs, amoebas, tomatoes, humans, all of life was subject to the laws of natural selection and to the laws of organic biochemistry. But this is now about to change. Science is replacing evolution by natural selection with evolution by intelligent design. Not the intelligent design of some god above the clouds, but our intelligent design and the intelligent design of our clouds, the IBM cloud, the Microsoft cloud, these are the new driving forces of evolution. And at the same time, science may enable life after being confined to, for four billion years to the limited realm of organic compounds, science may ena enable life to break out into the inorganic realm. So after four billion years of organic life shaped by natural selection, we are entering the era of inorganic life shaped by intelligent design. If I heard correctly, plan is to blur the lines between man and technology as we see a push for humans to become genetically modified quote-unquote hackable animals you're seeing man challenge the design of the most high or as how he said some god in the clouds as he imposes an ideology that's out to replace natural design or so-called evolution in other words we're incomplete beings in need of an upgrade this makes me think of a verse in the bible in the book of Isaiah, chapter 14, verse 12 through 14, where it says, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven, I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the clouds. I will be like the Most High. They were openly speaking of life-changing agendas. Meanwhile, the masses were consumed with the pandemic propagated by media as well as social internet sites as we see people regress to a state of survival and literally fight over toilet paper. That social downward spiral would continue as we started to see the push of a being as the priority overall in order to get back to the way things once were. Even if that meant disregarding the actual process and steps and take to ensure that the vet didn't have any long-term effects, I encourage everyone to research mRNA technology as this is the first time in human history that this technology was used. Now let's fast forward to 2021 we see a rise in cryptocurrency as well as digital assets being more and more common in regular conversation. Also, 5G towers being built all across the world as the internet becomes a more integral part of life for human beings. As we see physical interactions between people become something we have to learn to adjust to again. Enter the Great Reset. The question to ask how do we build back better? To build back better or whatever. We have a chance to reset the clock and build back better than before. To build back better than before. Remember the, the terrible damage of COVID as we try to build back from this uh, global pandemic. Joe Biden calls it build back better. Build back better. Building back better. To do things differently. To build back better. We're going to build it back better. And build it back better my plan to build back better uh start taking all the problems that have been created in right. education and mental health and start to to build back in a positive way i have launched a booklet called build back better britain after coronavirus it's about building this country back better growing conspiracy following it it is called the great reset an unprecedented opportunity to rethink and reset the ways in which we live. The great opportunity for reset. The theory even calls Mr. Biden's campaign slogan, Build Back Better, a front for the conspiracy. Build back better. Building back better our economy. 
build back better. All elements of the Great Reset are fundamental to building the future we need. This pandemic has provided an opportunity for a reset. It's a big effort to, some would say, to build back, back better. We would say to really have a great reset. Conspiracy, conspiracy. 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 What exactly does it mean to build back better? What does it mean to have a great reset? In order to build back, that means the previous way has to be destroyed. Keep this in mind. In mid 2021, the vaccine mandates became more widespread across the world. Particularly in America, we've seen a mandate for all federal and healthcare workers put in place. And as a result, thousands and thousands of jobs were lost due to a pushback from the public who didn't agree that the right to choose should be null and void. We've seen protests all across the country in objection to the mandates, but little support from the liberal news stations and media outlets that were in support of the vaccine. Those people were instead made out to be selfish and far right wingers, and here's a good one, Trump supporters, rather than individuals who believed in their rights to choose. This caused the divide between the vax and the un As the world was under the stranglehold of the pandemic, we started to see decrease in goods and resources. Things that were once available in abundance were now becoming less and less visible. The food supply chain seemed to be impacted heavily by the COVID-19. Also, inflation increasing to all-time highs, almost foreshadowing the inevitable, which is the economic collapse and the fall of the American dollar. Americans all across the country had to make a decision. Take the jab or lose your job. With the thought of not being able to survive in the minds of the people, most were indirectly forced to take it, even though they did not want to. Into the year 2022, and the introduction to a new boogeyman, the war in Ukraine. As we see the old threat of COVID-19 decrease, we see a new threat take stage. The once life-changing threat to society has seemed to take a back seat to the threat of nuclear conflict. Certain restrictions and mandates are lifting as the price of gas and inflation rise to an all-time high number. The people of America puts the blame on the presidency, while the presidency can now place blame on Russia. With the price of gas being as high as it is, seven dollars in some areas, most people can't help but think of the movie, I Am Legend. The world of medicine has seen its share of miracle cures, from the polio vaccine to heart transplants, but all past achievements may pale in comparison to the work of Dr. Alice Crippen. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Let's do it. So, Dr. Crippen, give it to me in a nutshell. Well, the premise is quite simple. Um, take something designed by nature and reprogram it to make it work for the body rather than against it. You're talking about a virus? Indeed, yes, in this case, the measles. Um, virus, which has been engineered at a genetic level to be helpful rather than harmful. Um, and I, I find the best way to describe it is if you can if you can imagine your body as a highway and you picture the virus as a very fast car um, being driven by a very bad man, imagine the damage that that car could cause. Then if you replace that man with a cop, the picture changes and that's essentially what we've done. Now, how many people have you treated so far? Well, we've had 10,009 um, clinical trials in humans so far. And how many are cancer-free? 10,009. So you have actually cured cancer? Yes, yes. Yes, we have. Quick side note. Just an observation as an avid film watcher. One of the things that I tend to notice about post-apocalyptic movies are the little things in the background that tells a bigger story. For instance, the movie starts off with Will Smith's character already existing in a world after whatever traumatic events took place without going into details about the chain of events that led to that point. But if you look at the background, you can see plastic covering buildings, as to say there was a mass quarantine that took place, or news clippings that tells the story of a struggle to survive during that time. The background settings tells a story that the viewer will have to see or read between the lines. I say that to say, are we seeing those same settings build up in real time? 
Are we seeing pieces being put in place that will lead to a much bigger event? Only time will tell, but based on some of the info in this video, I wouldn't be surprised. That brings me back to the Great Reset and why I believe it to be the fourth industrial revolution. As we see the increase in use of technology, we see a decline in human activity. As days go on, we become more and more dependent on technology in every aspect of life. Scapegoats have been created because of past events that took place to push the idea that everything must be under control and put on the grid. An example can be because of gas being so high, the use of electric cars could solve that problem. And of course, electric cars can be controlled and put on the grid. You may not be able to drive if you haven't done this or that or if you haven't taken this or taken that. Or you won't be able to access your home or your job if you haven't conformed to a social aspect of society. Or because of global warming, the carbon emission footprint of the people must be controlled and moderated. Every aspect of your life must be controlled and under the watchful eye of the elite. Anyone that opposes the agenda will simply have their voices taken away. The person who has the keys to the media pretty much has the keys to the minds of the masses. Elon Musk said Neuralink hopes to start implanting its brain chips in humans in 2022 later than he anticipated. Well, I gotta assume that's a hard thing to figure out, uh, the whole implanting process. Yeah, with the brains and the humans. 2022 is gonna be an exciting year. You get your brain implant, you get your Cybertruck. Things like Neuralink, which is an implant of a chip into the brain, now seems more likely to happen in the future. As artificial intelligence increases, our privacy decreases less and less. What does this mean for us? What does this mean for our future? Are we entering an Orwellian dystopia where our liberty and free will becomes obsolete for the sake of being built back better? Even our realities are becoming more virtual. Book is planning to rebrand itself with a new name to focus on the metaverse. South Korean millennials and Gen Z are also gathering in virtual alternative worlds. The term metaverse is fast becoming a buzzword in tech and business. But do you know what it means? Here's Reuters Elizabeth Halcroft. So the word metaverse is quite a broad term, uh, but generally it refers to online spaces that allow people to interact in a more immersive way than a traditional website. This could be through the use of virtual reality, so wearing a VR headset, but people also use the term metaverse to refer to virtual environments where you have an avatar, a little cartoon person representing yourself, and you can walk around and interact with other people's avatars, like in a video game. Fans of the metaverse see it as the next stage in the development of the internet. Your different monitors. CEO Mark Zuckerberg said in July that Facebook will transition from being a social media company to a metaverse company in the next five years. They've already invested heavily in developing virtual and augmented reality headsets and glasses and will reportedly create 10,000 jobs in the European Union to bring their metaverse plans to life. We shouldn't really have to have to physically be together to, to feel present or collaborate or brainstorm. And Facebook is certainly not alone. Other investors and companies are getting excited about being a part of the next big thing. The term metaverse is popular in Silicon Valley, with Microsoft also talking about converging the digital and physical worlds. Because of the global health crisis over the past 18 months, more people have been working from home and going to school remotely, spending a lot more time online and missing out on human interaction. At the moment, we connect with people who aren't physically near us by going to websites such as social media platforms or using messaging apps and video calls. But now some people think there's more demand for online spaces where people's interactions can be more multi-dimensional and lifelike, allowing people to immerse themselves in digital content rather than simply viewing it. There is also a specific type of metaverse which uses blockchain technology, the same technology that's behind Bitcoin. One of such blockchain-based virtual worlds is Decentraland. In there, users can buy digital assets such as clothes and even land using cryptocurrencies. Fashion companies are noticing the trend. 
experimenting with making virtual clothing, which people's avatars can wear in metaverse environments. While the metaverse offers a new space for people to socialize, trade, game, and even attend music concerts, right now, it's still no comparison to the real world. So you might have seen science fiction films that are set in fully fledged metaverses or alternate digital worlds that are almost indistinguishable from real physical life. But there's still the stuff of fiction. At the moment, most virtual spaces I've seen look more like the inside of video games than real life. With the increase of the digital world, cryptocurrency, NFTs, blockchain technology, it's clear to see the direction the elites are pushing the world towards. And it's at the expense of everything that makes you human. Remember, in order to build back better, the previous standard has to be destroyed. That's maybe why the World Economic Forum, you know, the same people who call for a great reset, predicts mass starvation and disasters to take place soon. And based on the background settings, all signs point toward that outcome. So in conclusion, be prepared for some drastic changes to take place in the near future. Changes that will alter the way people think and what they perceive to be real. If you're someone of faith and believe in the power of God, I encourage you to put all your faith in Him and not into this world. Yahweh is what will save you in those latter days. And him only. Till then, be blessed.